Unemployed and Afraid acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we have recorded this episode on and of the land where you, the listener, are tuning in from. We would like to pay our respects to Elders past, present and extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, acknowledging that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Unemployed and Afraid a podcast that explores the glorious mess of building brands, businesses, and a career you love with the people who've done it. I'm your host, Kim Curtin. Thank you for being here. Let's get into today's story of starting over. Hello to you and welcome to another story of business building and all the lessons, chaos, and personal challenge that comes with it. Where are you at with your business? Are you in a growth spurt where you're flying along, feeling busy, but inspired? Are you suffering a vulnerability hangover after putting something out into the world? Are you maybe doubting your every decision and simultaneously suffering from decision fatigue? Because same, sometimes in the very same day. And I'm feeling all of this while I launch a brand new episode, not this glorious story you're about to hear, but a second weekly episode. You asked for more, so I am bringing you more business building inspo. The biggest piece of feedback that I hear from you is that this pod and its stories make you feel seen, heard, and less alone on the journey that is building your brands and businesses. And I use a plural there because I feel like we're all slightly addicted to this building thing. And so it's probable that, like me, you have a few prongs in the fire, if that's the right saying. Anyway, your second episode is going to bring us all even closer together so that we can all grow bigger, better, and badder by sharing the realness of business. It's me and you in conversation via via my favorite tech feature, voice notes. So each week I'll drop a new question about business building. If you have a story to share, just flick me a voice note via DM and you'll be included in the show. It's for us to share all of the different experiences we have that make up our individual business journey. Think of it as your building blocks shared on social stories. So make sure you're following Unemployed and Afraid on IG and on LinkedIn for the weekly question and make sure you're dropping into my DMs. Okay, so whether you've been listening to this pod for a while or you've just joined, so welcome, you'll be aware that I don't shy away from the feels. And today's episode with Carly and Aaron, the lovers behind the proposal guru is no exception. We get real about the experience of building and scaling your business, how bloody scary it can be at times to go all in and just so much more. I get a little mushy about the love stuff in this episode, the irony of which is not lost on me, given that for the most part, I don't feel particularly connected to, well, anything traditional, but that's another entire podcast in itself. But I do really love seeing people do what makes them happy and displaying genuine emotion. That just gets me every time. And making that your work or your business, I mean, sign me up. In this chat, we cover things like going in full-time on a side hustle, jumping out and going back in again with two children and no sales leads, no less, how to protect yourself from getting spooked off of growing your business, hint, comparison is a killer, and the new challenges that come when you finally get to that stage of building your business, when the opportunities finally start to come to you. These guys are wonderful, passionate, and I'm sure you'll learn so much from their business journey so far. Please enjoy the chat. I'm chatting today with Aaron and Carly, husband and wife and business partners in The Proposal Guru. These two help create a once in a lifetime engagement proposal experience for people's partners. Their proposals are like walking into the scene of an epic rom-com. Think lots of candles, roses and beautiful styling straight out of a scene on The Bachelor. Their work is completely client-driven. They are there to provide ideas and guidance on just simply making it perfect, to execute the secret plan, then capture it with all the pictures and videos you need to reflect on the experience. Their proposals have included a a $7,500 rose purchase, wowzers, and moments so epic that they've made the news. As a big fan of love and a secret watcher of people's beautiful moments, yes, I can't help but watch airport arrivals, puppy gifting, and of course, proposals proposal videos on TikTok. I can't wait to hear about the journey you've had in building this amazing business. Carly and Aaron, welcome to Unemployed and Afraid. 
Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. It's lovely to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. I just couldn't wait to see all of your photos and videos and all of the tear jerking moments from this incredible business that you've built. So I have been very excited to, to speak to you today. To get us started, and whoever wants to go first can, can jump in here. I'd like to know how you would describe the other. Karen is an incredibly hardworking person, the most hardworking person I know. And one of his biggest qualities is just incredible determination. And I mean that because he not only is determined to make this business work, but it's more the intention and the why behind it. So Aaron and I discussed very early on in our relationship that we didn't want to work for other people for the rest of our lives. And, you know, that holidays and adventures and exploring was really important and that we really wanted a big family. And I guess to make all that work, we really had to think out of the box. And I guess another thing is we we didn't want to be hating what we were doing. So I think Aaron's determination and hard work to really push for our family and all our core values is one of the main reasons why we've been so successful. So I think that's one of his biggest qualities. Yeah. That's really kind. And I I wrote all of that, Kim, by the way. (laughs) I saw the script. (laughs) It's really fun, sweetie. Mm -hmm. I would describe Carly as as really passionate. I think she just very passionate about everything she does. She's an amazing mom and just drives headlong into being an amazing mom. And she's an amazing partner. And she's she's really passionate about what we do as well because we speak about this a ridiculous amount. Like Mm -hmm. we spoke about engagement proposals was more than anyone could in the world. So she's anything she does, she's really passionate about and really wears her heart on the sleeve and yeah she's really beautiful then do you have any rules about where and when you're not allowed to talk about work we probably should that's that that would be a, a good key but no we actually don't I think there are times where we've got two young boys and you know one of them will be having a tantrum or it'll be during feeding time because they're they're two boys that are always hungry and um one of us will just say I just need a minute like please stop like pause about the business but because it's so fast flowing I think that our our lead times are quite short and sometimes we've got something really important that kind of needs to be dealt with there and then so unfortunately we probably don't have the ability to say let's talk about this tonight because yeah it, it needs to be actioned sooner than that so so we do our best, yeah. but yeah. Probably say like like a lot of businesses would have scheduled planning meetings and strategic meetings, and it's really just if you have an idea, let's just share it, work on it, and just sort of micro adjust as we go. So yeah, like I guess that works for us at the moment in this stage, and and that's amazing. But yeah, it'll be a breakfast combo. I, I think we do really try not to do it at date nights. So I think that's really. I think we're getting to this stage like early days would have been yes, absolutely talk all the time, just with ideas. But these yeah. days, I think there's. We probably, I think we're just finally at that stage where we're like, okay, you're comfortable and we can sort of switch off a little bit. So I'm actually pretty proud of that. So, yeah. Or at least until the mains come, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll do it for, for entree. That's not as long as it is, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure I'm getting dessert out of him and then and then we'll stop talking about it. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Before we go too deep into the creation of this amazing business, it's another question for each of you. Carly, perhaps we start with you. Before the proposal guru, who were you? So I'm originally from far north Queensland. I moved to Brisbane when I was 19. I I worked on charter boats, which I loved. I had great experiences back home, but I think I hit a point one day where I was like, if I don't leave this small town, I'm going to be here forever. So I kind of left. I wasn't even accepted into uni or anything. And I didn't even really know what I wanted to do. And eventually got accepted into a Bachelor of Creative Arts. So I moved to Brisbane and within two months of moving, I met Aaron. And yeah, we kind of just hit it off straight away. And I think we were living together within six months and saving for a house and it all happened really quickly. And, and I was at uni, I've done a lot of random jobs. I used to be a, you know, head cook at a cafe and I was a nanny for seven years and I worked at a specialized fabric store and all this really random stuff. And I, I started my own business in yeah, did. Yeah. painting and stuff because that's my creative arts field. And, and it was every yeah. Saturday down at the markets, getting out the marquees, getting out the stock. It was, yeah. Yeah, so I think it just... I I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I just didn't want to be in a small town. And yeah, so that's kind of where I began. Yeah. So you've had that entrepreneurial spirit kind of running through for a little while. 
I think just really wanting to find something that I'm really passionate about. And I just think early on, I knew that it wasn't a regular job in inverted commas. Yeah. I just wanted to do something really creative and different. And yeah, I guess you could say entrepreneurial, but Aaron's definitely the business side. I'm more the creative going, oh, I've got this great idea. And I was like, logistically, how is that going to work? And I'm like, we, it just will. Like, <laughs> So I think we both even each other out a little bit. Carly talks herself down. I'll have a problem and I'll bring it. And, and she'll just cut through the fat and does amazing work. She's a consultant. I sort of come to say, so, nah, she's, she's a ripper. Hmm. How about you, Aaron? What did you do before the proposal guru? And who were you? I yeah grew up on the Gold Coast and right into sports. So went to uni doing sports business, majoring in sport and event management. But um, so I, I'd say like I'm, a, I'm definitely a planner. Like I was sort of the original part of this and love to sort of be involved in that and loved events and such. And I worked for the AFL for a lot of years. And and then as soon as this sort of come, then we sort of quit and, and did some weird things to be honest. But I, I think that I was thinking about this the other day actually. I was I think it was in grade six and it was one of those activities you had to do. And what do you want to do when you're older? And I think how nerdy is this? like I think I wrote I want to own my own business and that sounds so corny because it's like the most boring thing about Paris and all of what the grade sixes are doing right but I think mum and dad own their own business and they did amazing things and I think I think there's sort of this thing that sort of flowed through to me that said that you can guide your own journey a little bit more and you can take your life in a direction you want a bit more so then that's sort of yeah what really sort of sung through to me. Yeah, I can relate to that. My parents were business owners. In fact, my parents were in business together. And uh, <laughs> sorry, I've, I've seen that that model before um, work effectively. <laughs> but yes, it does get under your skin a little bit, doesn't it? So take me back to, and you can all, of course, tell me your proposal story. I've naturally watched the video, but and I'll include it for all of the listeners. But take me back to the spark of this idea for the proposal guru, where it came from and how it grew. Well, it really didn't happen until after our proposal. So I'll throw to Carly to tell the story of the proposal, but because it's, it's definitely about her, but Carly, Carly's creative and she loves dance and the arts. And so I thought we're watching, watching the movie Friends with Benefits with Justin Timberlake and yeah, uh, yeah that's the one. Yeah. And then they had a flash mob in that and we're watching this movie and I was like, I think my eyes might have gone, gosh, that's, that's pretty amazing. Wow. What's, what's that? And so thought, gosh, that might be a really cool idea. And why don't we make this interesting and we'll do it in Melbourne. So, cause anyway, so I did a lot of planning and such around that. And then we obviously had the proposal and then, yeah, it was, it was a cousin who said, Hey, you could actually do this for a business. And we thought, oh gosh, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting idea. And so that sort of just sparked the idea initially. And we had no idea really what it would grow to, or, or if anyone was doing it in, in the same field, or we just thought, oh, that's a really sort of a niche, I guess. So I love the proposal video, Carly, you're, I think you're walking with your girlfriends, perhaps it's it's family, but walking along and then you kind of like, what's happening? What's happening? And then the drop that, oh God, I know what this is. <laughs> and just the overwhelm of overstimulation, all the exciting things that were happening around you. It was just so fun to watch. Did you ever think in that moment that you'd be doing it for other people as a profession? Never. It would not. You, there is no way that I would have thought that in that moment. Yeah. I don't even remember what our jobs were at that time, but yeah, when I think back over our journey from that point to where we are now, it's a bit of a dream, like a lot of hard work, but it's quite surreal to think what we've accomplished but yeah definitely would not have thought that that's what we would be doing not a chance yeah because even then like people will listen to this and they'll be like what do you mean engagement proposal experiences like people very honestly like all our friends are like what what do you mean by that and what does that actually what what do you mean so and even now I feel like we've got to pull out Instagram to actually show show people because people are still giving you these blank looks of what like (laughs) especially my dad for instance when we told him about the idea there was not a chance that that was going to fly. I think he looked at Aaron and went, you've just quit your decent job and this is what you want to do? Like, <laughs> I guess like our philosophy is kind of like our own, our clients are like normal people who just want to create this beautiful moment for their partner. And what that looks and feels like is what they decide it is. But yeah, I think that's really the premise. And uh, yeah. Where did you get started in making it real, in turning it into a business? What were your first few mm-hmm. steps? I think they were very informal. And I think that because I went to uni and I did a business degree and actually you'd love to think and no disrespect to people in education. And I probably wasn't the best student, but I feel like I went to uni and there's definitely great things that I learned through that, that I definitely don't think it taught me 
business. And it's like anyone who own their own business and they just learn and have a crack along the way. And so very informal to start with. We started the business and I just thought it'd be coordination, just like what I've just done then. And, oh, let's help people coordinate. I'm a good planner. We'll do that. And that's when Carly was working on her uh, her own business. And then when we decided, look, let's just maybe focus on the one because this one probably has the, the wheels to, to get moving. Carly said, we should probably get into styling. And I said, oh gosh, that, that sounds extremely expensive. And it has been. So, but that's the thing. So that was probably these informal stages, actually figuring out what we were. And then actually then to go and go and, because in our brains, we're like, we've got these ideas and we've spoken about it. And we know what, we know we can do it. We just need some people to take some risks on us. and smoke and mirrors and a little bit like that in terms of, okay, we've bought some things and we know we can do it, but then we just need some people to to come on this journey with us. And that was a really tough stage from there. So we, I guess, in terms of stages, like you were talking about, it was trying to get some photos and, and inspiration out there, but it's chicken or the egg. And with everything we do, people see amazing stuff and it self perpetuates, but that first part was so hard to get traction, exceptionally hard. Yeah, I think we we did two things that really stand forward as kind of crazy. The first one was every person we would chat to, we would go, so is your sister looking at getting engaged soon? Do you know anybody? Do you have a friend at work that you think would really like to propose to their partner? Because we could do it for free. And it was us just going, who, you know, using word of mouth, who is going to propose where we can take photos because the photos sell better when there is a couple in the photo. (laughs) So that was always helping. And, and, you know, I think at times we even looked at just getting friends that were, you know, a couple, but then it gets a little bit awkward when a guy's on one knee and they're not at that stage at all. And they're going, well, this is a bit awkward because we've only been dating for six months and and that sort of thing. And it doesn't really sell. And then the other crazy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On that, we did one, we called them activations, if that's what you're going to say, but we did one activation where, because I was behind the camera we had to get a stand-in model for them to be a partner for Carly for photos and like okay well this is a little bit weird but we'll, we'll hold hands and and that's about as far as it can go so it was <laughs> but it was desperate what measures. You do. and then other times it was literally Aaron and I late at night after finishing our regular jobs setting up a fake proposal and it was literally just to take photos and to show off our styling and our stock and but again that doesn't sell that far when you don't have a real life couple in the picture so yeah there's an energy that people bring that styling alone looks a bit flat yeah there's a lot of work at the start so tell me about your first client I can't even remember our first clients to be honest I I, it was a reproposal no it yeah I think it was actually yeah, it yeah, was yeah, at yeah. New Farm yeah 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 so it was at New Farm Rotunda in Brisbane and I was still nannying at the time and I don't think I finished till six o'clock and Aaron's like I'll be fine proposals at seven just pop on by afterwards and I remember driving there and I could see Aaron in the distance and my heart sank and I just went oh my gosh there is so much to do and the clients are going to be here in half an hour and Carly was walking up beautifully casually and composed I I may have started waving my arms saying please (laughs) run So I think Aaron and I just absolutely hustled for that half an hour. And looking back, like the work's disastrous. It's just. (laughs) This was before we had red carpets and we had this red fabric work. You know what, if we put this this way here, we can pretend this is a red carpet. Um, Until anyone walks on it. And then, you know, it's just moving fabric on on a wooden floor. So the the cost of that, and I said re-proposal because there's actually a couple who proposed in the past and they were re-proposing for a special moment. So. That was that was really beautiful and, and for that it was so nice and they were lovely. We spent the, the fees on that to then upgrade the lens. So we bought a nifty 50 lens for that. Didn't quite understand what that meant and it can't zoom in or out. So I'm hanging off the rotunda trying to get some perspective to take the photos for this one. And and yeah, we actually had a situation where Carly was on her phone recording this proposal for the couple, but then felt nervous that she couldn't leave where she was. And so we both walked away. We hadn't talked about, oh, let's rendezvous with this area. I was like, where's Carly? I can't find her and I can't call her. And I actually panicked and I thought that she'd been abducted. So I started walking around New Farm and there's like this van and I'm like, oh gosh. So I, I, I knocked on this van and I've gone, hey, have you seen my wife? <laughs> this person's going, what? <laughs> 
They're and filing. There you go. Well, I'm just hiding in the bushes. Why are you recording for 20 want, minutes? Yeah, I didn't want the couple to see me, which is ridiculous because now, now that we've been doing this for so long, we're like, no, no, they know what's happening. You take the right photo, you're in the right spot, and then you walk away, which makes perfect sense. But at the time, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't be seen. I'm going to hide in this tiny little bush for 20 minutes on my phone on airport mode and not speak to my husband. And I thought, this is a disaster. Like, what is going on here? And it's, it's really funny we talk about that because new people, new staff members, you're so excited and you're overwhelmed. And, and it's like, no, actually, we're going to just keep it calm and we're going to process. And people, I think, they, yeah, it responds better, but it's, gosh, that was definitely interesting. But yes, yeah, so that was our first one. But I probably, I, I probably our first real big proposal was Lee and Ricky. So uh, Lee and Ricky were an archipelago proposal at the Sunshine Coast, and they went to lunch at the restaurant where they had their first date. Yeah. Archipelago is when there's essentially a group of people, and they're all making music just with their voices. There's no instruments, just like pitch perfect. And um, yeah, just the energy behind an acapella is just, it's incredible. And essentially Ricky was sitting at the table by herself and, you know, having a glass of wine, waiting for Lee to come back. And and then all these acapella singers just started singing and she was like, this is cool, but very random. And she's just looking around and, and then halfway through, 40 friends and family all flying in from like all interstate and everything just just surprised her and they all ran in and it was just she's such an animated beautiful person and we've managed to stay in touch and and she's just so lovely and watching her reaction to this acapella was just incredible and and towards the end she got really emotional and um you're really just riding this wave and yeah. she's just she was one of those people where that proposal was absolutely perfect for her personality and sometimes I think couples choose something that they are going to love rather than their partner's going to really love but this one was so perfect for Ricky and the person that she is and it was just I don't think there was a dry eye in the vicinity it was just so amazing and it just went off so perfectly and, and the songs were sort of really to get some excitement and interest and then they were funky and the last one was quite emotional and then by the end of it Ricky's going where's Lee where's Lee and then Lee comes the family parts and he punches through the middle the great man and he proposed and as Carly said it was just it was it was an unbelievable feeling like you just can't like it's something that we'll both cherish and you know on another level we've got Carly on a video camera I'm on a I'm on a video mum's mum and dad are there all on videos we've got multiple angles and flew my brother up and like it was one of those things it was like okay let's just pull everyone in for this and yeah it was it was really beautiful. Oh, I could just listen to proposal stories all day. They just get me right in the feels. I feel like I'm right there. And I love that you pulled out all the stops for that to, to understand that you you have to go big at first. You have to have something to show people. You have to really put in to, to be able to show what's possible to take your business to the next level. How did you know at the time that there would be a market for this kind of service? I'm not sure that we really did great business planning, to be completely honest. So, I get that. <laughs> I think we just decided like, okay, there's not a lot of people doing this. And then we researched and we found people that did it. But then we're like, okay, well, we think we can do this differently. And we we would love doing this. And I think if you love doing it, you're going to really excel in it. And I guess our, our health theory is that people at that stage are having the best day of their life to that, to that point in time. And they are just you know and that's such a rewarding space to live in so to be able to support someone through that journey we thought gosh that's that's going to be going to be really great yeah and I think also so many of our friends had previously been proposed to and just quietly the girls would come up to me and go man he really missed the mark like we just had such a beautiful day together this 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 happened and and then they proposed like this in my pajamas at the end of the night and and they're just you know head in hands going I don't really understand what just happened and I think you hear enough of those stories and you go well we can create something really beautiful here that you know people are going to look back on and really feel passionately about talking about I think that when someone says how did you propose and you feel a little bit embarrassed about the story that kind of dampens it which which is silly because you're spending the rest of your life with someone and you're so happy but I feel 
that people get so much enjoyment talking about this special moment. And I don't feel like you have many moments in your life where you look back on and go, that was amazing. And I could talk about that anytime someone asked me. So, And not only that, but it's like, that was just for you. Like yeah. so many times in life, especially as adults, you get surprised. Uh, but that was not only a surprise, but that is just for you. And that's that's a gesture of love just for you. So, yeah. How did you balance the development of your business as it started to grow, as word of mouth started to happen and things started to, to flow with your business models and your financials at that time? How was that experience for you? Yeah, I think it's really just the whole process for us has been just have a crack yourself. And so, and that's been great. And also really challenging. So it's it's now like I've developed skills to be a bookkeeper, like many small business owners will, and, and zero. How fun is that to, to operate? Bless them. But <laughs> so all those areas, and now we're great, you know, really grateful for the fact we're sort of now at the time, okay, I think we can now afford to outsource that and get someone else to manage that problem because I've got so many other problems to work on, and that would be a better use of time. So, and I think that in, in actually one of our key things was getting someone to help us with advertising and reaching clients for us with proposals, it's pre-wedding. So the wedding market is, is obviously amazingly successful and, and wild, isn't it? Like it's amazing, but to find people before that stage is really quite challenging. And that's what we really struggled with. So we found someone who could help us to find that, find that niche. And that's when our business went from quite a, quite a second rate side hustle, <laughs> side hustle yeah. really stepped up a notch. And then we're like, okay, now we're finding people. Now we've got to find the ways how we best convert them and how we make that, um, when I say convert, like guide them on a journey and say, okay, we've got you here. We've got some great ideas and how, how are we going to support you through your ideas as well? So I think yeah, coming back to your question, we did everything ourselves and then probably to a large degree still do, but now can outsource that to, to other people. So, and I think for us, it's been a process of, okay, how do we then reinvest a lot of profits? And then we've reinvested a lot, if not the majority, <laughs> into re -into, into stock, which means that we can then broaden the scope of what we can do. Because I guess the whole idea about our business is that people can jump on and say, okay, gosh, I really love the look at this, but how do I make it look a bit different? So to then invest in that has probably been one of the key things I think is why I've been, you know, really grateful that we have been successful because if we, we reinvested so heavily into stock, then people go, oh, gosh, I really love that. Or I guess the diversity of choice in, in an experience. So. That makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of people get to that stage where they're in business and they realize they need to find the person, the the service that's going to take them to the next level. And there often is a lot of hesitancy around that. How did you go about finding the person to help you do that? And then it's a bit of a trust exercise in finding that, trusting that they'll deliver what they say they're going to deliver. How was that experience for you? How did you go about it? Yeah, I think we've been really lucky with Belle in Google Advertising because she she's, she's a small business herself. And I think maybe that's really maybe a really interesting point there to really dive into. As a small business, if we had to go into, and not, no, nothing against an agency or anything, but when we went to another small business, man, she was on the line and she did so much detail and she was so proud of her services and like, okay, I don't know what you're talking about with all these specifics with the advertising, but I'm going to back you in. And she was just amazing. And so I think that that, enabled us to have that trust and again nothing against anybody else who might provide the service but I could certainly resonate that she was another small business and she's very honest and truthful and, and we could do that so that was really nice and we we're really dealing with her on a personal level like every time we had questions queries we wanted to chat about you know new advertising models for the following month you're talking to the same person every single time mm -hmm. um, it's someone that completely understands our business you're not dealing with like Aaron said a, a larger company or an agency where you're, you're speaking to a different person, retelling your story, saying, well, actually, you know, I, I agree for this with this person. Anyway, so it's it's a lot easier speaking to the one person and dealing with someone that's got their business on the line as well. Yeah. When did you guys decide to go all in, in full time? And how was that experience? I think we've done that twice. So I think we, we, we stuffed it up the first time royally and then we <laughs> have had a second crack. So that's probably one thing there. But I guess when I first got engaged, we're like, okay, let's, let's, it's time for a change. Let's quit the job. And everyone thought, gosh, you're absolutely bonkers. And obviously we were, but that was our first all in. And in a way, like we worked for cafes and different things, but really that was our focus. But then it got to the stage where things were tight. Also looking to start a family and you can't start a family with this, you know, the smell of an oily rag, like it just doesn't work. So yeah. And that was, that was a pretty, pretty down time to be completely honest. I remember, you know, 
being a salesperson for, for phones and just doing this stuff which you do not believe in just to get some money through the door and you're like gosh I hate this so much and I think um, I was working two jobs I think I was yeah. the main breadwinner at that stage um, Absolutely. and yeah. I was, I was yeah. honestly starting work at 5 a.m finishing at six just crazy jobs yeah. two jobs and six days a week just to um keep this dream alive essentially and so then then I ended up getting a job again just because it just wasn't working and it wasn't there. And look, we were having proposals, but it was nothing you could live on. Like it was, and so then got another job and, and really grateful got to work for a really good nonprofit organization and, and really, really quite valued there. But then we did start to get further traction and it just started with, you know, our model was clicking further. And then it did come to a stage where we thought, you know what, it is now time for us to, to make the jump. And when we say that, it's because we we could see the future. It's not like it was really working. It was still working. It was on and off, essentially. Uh, it was the beginning of 2021 and we had no leads in the pipeline. So we're quite a like a short lead. Literally, someone called today about this Sunday. So, you know, a couple of days. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and Friday's gig was a couple of days ago. So we, we, we got back from holidays. We thought, you know what? It's time to make this jump. And yep, it's not ideal that we've got no one in the lead in the pipeline. And that's pretty high risk and, and certainly not everyone's cup of tea. But we thought, you know what? Let's have faith. Our history shows us that people do come and we're doing good stuff and people love our photos. We're getting good reviews and it'll all work out okay. There was also a little bit extra pressure because we had by then, well, Alfie was born by then, but we had little Forrest was was on the way. So he was, so to have, you know, be on the, the verge of having a second baby and then quit the full-time job, it was definitely a risk. Aaron, coming back to how I described him at the start, he just has this unwavering faith and I think it's, again, his determination of just going, we will work it out. It will be okay. Whereas I tend to be a lot more cautious and want to stay on the fence. And yeah, just the thought of having a, I think Alfie were at that stage had just turned one yeah. and I was, we were pregnant again with our second. And to me, I've always grown up in a household where I just really wanted stability. And I think I was like, I really want to put all our eggs in this basket, but I'm really scared and we've got kids now. And, you know, there's a lot more to think about, but I think it was just came back to Aaron's determination of just going, we can do this. We've been, we've been struggling for a long time, but we've actually got a model now that works and we reach people and we can convert people and we're creating amazing love stories. So I think it was that turning point of deciding if we don't do it now then we won't do it at all a big and a very scary decision to make but often with that scary decision comes great reward you've actually given me an excellent segue there with your mention of love stories and that's actually how I found out personally about your business I read Trent Dalton's book love stories, cried about a million times. Absolute swoon. Of course, listener, if you haven't read that book yet, you absolutely need to go read it for all of the good feels. Can you tell me about the experience meeting and chatting with Trent Dalton and ultimately ending up in his book? He's just such a lovely man. He's like, so kind. Speaking to him, he's so kind. He ended up coming down and I'll refer to, I'll throw to you in a second, but uh, we had a flash mob at New Farm Park down at Jam Powers Markets. And we don't do a lot of flash mobs, by the way, right? We're telling all these stories. They're very high intensity, but there's lots of candles and roses typically. But like Trent, we've actually got this amazing flash mob coming down in the middle of the park at New Farm. Do you want to come down? Yeah, absolutely. So he came down. It was just so nice. We had Alfie there and we we're talking about love stories. And he was just so, yeah, such a, he was such a really nice guy. Very genuine, really down to earth and yeah, just fell in love with that love story. But when he first contacted us, I think I was, we were getting ready for something. I was in the bathroom and, and Aaron was chatting to him and his eyes was just like, oh my God, this is Tread Dalton. And I had one of his books, Boy Swallows Universe in the bookshop and Aaron literally put it on mute and held up the book and went, Tread Dalton's on the phone. And I was like, talking about <laughs> and I you know you're trying to communicate while the phone's on mute while he's finishing talking and then you got to get back on the phone and and I just remember him being on the phone and he just again found our love story and what we do and and he just really wanted to connect for his book and was so lovely and that's how you know, he came on board with watching the flash mob and we got to chat more, but yeah, it was, it's quite a surreal experience. And the book is just so amazing. It's yeah. Everyone has to read it. It's beautiful. 
It's such a big honor to be asked because like any small business owner would know, it's just this chaos and you're just in the grind and it's it's, it's hard to sometimes come up for air and then not to complain, but then as, as parents as well, and you've got this beautiful, let's call it absolute beautiful chaos going on. And so we've got this swirling craziness and between changing nappies and the long nights, it, there's no part of you that thinks, all right, I'm, I should be in a love story. Like this is just gritty and it's pooey and it's and there's no <laughs> sleep and you're like and then to someone to say I think you you might be a really good love story you're like that's amazing I never think that but and then you talk about some kind things and, and it's really really nice to talk about but to have Alfie's name in print as well is just, is just so nice to have a little guy in there and, and that's that's really beautiful because our, our business and the flash mob stories in there but also our personal love stories in there so yeah very yeah it's a really nice memento yeah, I'll find it really difficult not to make your show title now. It's gritty and it's pooey and it's because <laughs> it is just the most accurate, <laughs> accurate description. <laughs> it has never been more accurately described, this journey. That it's all chaos and then something magical happens and, you know, that just kind of reminds you of the amazing journey, the amazing path that you run when you do open yourself up to these possibilities. It's just such an incredible story and, yes, I agree, it is an incredible book and he is just total goals as a writer pretty amazing back to your business before I get carried away with love stories again what was it like bringing other people into your business for hiring staff for the first time quite interesting like and we've definitely changed our our mindsets along the way we we had a bit of a a, a pretty serious issue early this year with with family and we had to and we don't, we've never done this before. It was so serious. We had to, had to cancel a proposal on the day. And it was this, it was, it was as serious as you could get. So we would never do that lightly. And, and Carly had to make the call because I was indisposed at the time. And it was just the, the worst situation in the world to give that news to someone. It's exactly against our ethos and it's exactly what we don't do. But it really showed vulnerability for the fact that we really need to grow capacity. And the fact is, is that being at every single proposal for myself is not the solution. And, and I'm sure that resonates with a lot of business people because they're all doing everything themselves. But then to bring on different people, and we've really made a, a big focus for last 2020 two was bringing on some really good team members and and the positives have been really amazing because um we've got a, a staff member michael and he's a brilliant photographer like he's beyond 10 times as good as, as i am and his creativity and works just bring a shine to our work that we could never have expected from the role and so and then we're you know hiring and engaging different people through business now and um yeah it's it's certainly challenging but it's it's really beautiful so that that sort of was a real key moment when i look back and think before having extra capacity with with team members and staff when it's just you it's hard because as a business owner you know exactly what you want and you know exactly how it should be for the fact why you've spoken to the client and you know what exactly what they would like Two, you have all the insights where you think okay these are the tiny little touches which make it nice and it connects to the feels and you're just pushing and pulling for that to be a beautiful experience for them and then to to, to convey that to other people can be really challenging but really nice to bring them into the loop I think so and it's really hard finding that right staff member that fits that brief. And I think because we do something that you only really get one shot at, you only get one shot of capturing the moment and of making it perfect and of making the call if it's bad weather or, you know, there's so many factors where you get a redo in a lot of businesses, but with this one, you literally get one moment of getting it right. And there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. So I think trying to convey it to people that don't have that same energy or understand that you need to hustle. Like when we get to a spot and some paid venues, you have an hour and a half to set up something that may take three hours you need to hustle to get that done and it needs to be done to a quality because we want this experience to be amazing and conveying that to staff members that are as passionate as what we are at times can be really difficult and I think in the past Aaron and I have shied away from that because we've gone well it's easier for us to do it ourselves because we know what we want to create. We know the feelings that we want our couples to leave going. That was an amazing experience. And I think when you don't have those people that have that same passion or eye for detail or need for hustle or, you know, it falls back on us essentially. And 
And that's hard when we put so much time and effort and sweat and tears and years into this business. But also, like I I said, coming back to it, it's a once in a lifetime. We only get one shot. So we want it to be perfect or as close to as it can be. Just thinking about the the power of emotion in terms of a selling point. So, you know, so many brands, business products sell on evoking an emotion, but your whole business is quite literally embedded in the emotion of a moment. And yeah, you, you it's so right. There's not exactly a, a chance you ever have to redeem yourself in that respect. It must be very scary, almost a knife's edge of, you know, our business and our reputation hinges on every single proposal that we do. It just must be a, a lot. Yeah, I think it is a lot sometimes and managing so many different aspects like the weather and venues and suppliers and coordinating with so many people that may all come together for this moment because on the day for big proposals, you are a coordinator, but your main role is to style and to make sure that it's beautiful. But overarching, you've got to make sure everyone's in the right place at the right time and you're sticking to a schedule and And that's a lot at times. But again, you're coming back to that, well, we've got one shot at it and we want it to be great. Yeah. And I think so many business owners experience that same feeling of how do I get what's inside of my head? How I innately know what to do in any given moment? How do I insert that into somebody else's brain so that they can help me grow this business? I think so many of us experience that exact same feeling. And and I don't think you're alone there. How has your business grown recently? When we started The Proposal Guru, we we did a bit of research. We found this other mob called Unforgettable Proposals. And we looked at them thought, wow, they're nailing it. They're doing such great work. Gosh. And then we had to unfollow them from social media because, you know, your early days and they're nailing it. And Samantha Davies is is the one who's nailing it. And she's doing such amazing work. And I've done follow. It was just depressing and amazing work to her. But from our, and that, that, that our point, it was just so challenging. Just because we were totally in the weeds and she had been excelling at this for such a long time. And I think we looked at her and just went, well, we can do what she's doing, but we're nowhere near at that level yet. And yeah, so inspiring. But at the same time, you just go, we can't focus on the other lane right now. We really need to focus on what makes us different and how we're going to be different in this, in this field. And then, um, yeah, maybe August at the last 2022 found out that she was selling and we thought, gosh, that's a, that's an interesting situation. And it wasn't a great timing for us to be completely honest. It's not like we had a lot of cash reserve or anything like that. Um, we thought, oh, well, that's really interesting what if, like, what if we could combine these two beasts and what happens if we could work in harmony? Like that would be amazing. And so we started to look into that. And again, a lot of our, you know, people we might talk to think, oh, you're crazy. That's just not a good idea. We're like, actually, but there's something in this. And so then we, yeah, we, we went through the conversation. Long story, we we bought the, we bought unforgettable proposals. Wow. And it's just such a exciting and quite a, an amazing time for us. Like right now, like we're, when you bought it, really got it in September. So we've had it for three months. And it's just been this three months of trying to figure out what on earth is going on. And but across both brands, Proposal Guru does some stuff really well. And Unforgettable does stuff really well and between the two you know there's also some challenges within and, and how do we how do the brands learn from each other so we've gone from engagement proposal experiences just in southeast queensland and now we're in not only that but also in sydney and also melbourne so now there's a, a, a distance as well and it's it's amazing and it's scary <laughs> so there's uh there's a lot to learn so to, to be able to look back and think how much we admired and now we're in this amazing position really grateful to be able to to take that on. I think the key thing for us is that when you have one revenue stream and all your eggs in that one basket, it's so hard to take any risks. We're like, okay, we've got a really good mold. We know it's working. Oh gosh, I'm a bit scared to move outside that little bit of it there because, hey, you know, we've got to pay rent and we've got some kiddos and all those sort of things. And now, okay, now we've got two little eggs and they're both churning away. And now I, maybe we could take a few risks and maybe we could do some different things and ideas. And I that's sort of where we are at the moment and thinking, okay, what, what, what are some different ideas we could do and how do we grow and do these different? Yeah. So for us, that's, that's really exciting. So yeah. I'm guessing you had to follow their page again. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did have to follow. Yeah, and really, really proud to because gosh, been doing such amazing, just different. Like it's 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 the same type of business, but so different in the way they operate. So now we go, gosh, this is this is our photos now. That's amazing. And now 
yeah, it's it's really challenged the way we go about things in, in positive ways. So yeah, just, just sort of essentially, like I said to Samantha, I would have loved to have picked your brains like three years ago, like going through this handover. I was like, wow, you do it like this? That's amazing. We do it like this. And your idea sounds much better. Or, oh, okay, we do this and I'm pretty happy with this. But yeah, just to be able to pick someone's brains like this three years ago would have been next level, would have been amazing. But, you know, we're grateful to be able to have done it now. I mean, I joke about the the follow, but I actually think you're quite onto something there. When you're starting and you're growing something, comparison can just be the, the biggest killer of growth. And even when you think you're looking at it for inspiration, you think you're looking at it for ideas or to help you grow, it can actually really limit your own growth at some time. So I think the unfollow button or the mute button, the block button is just some of the best, best buttons that you can find at that period just to keep you going. I think it's really It's not personal. Like it's just, just to help yourself completely. 100%. What keeps you up at night at the moment? Other than our children. (laughs) (laughs) Great point. Yes. But mainly, mainly it's Alfie. Yeah, mainly it's Alfie. He tries to climb into bed anywhere between three or five a.m. at the moment because oh, he doesn't. A.m. is a good night because he doesn't want to sleep. Yeah. So what keeps us up at night? I think at the moment for for me in particular, and I probably whinge to Carly about this a lot, and we probably whinge to each other about it. I think we're opportunity rich, but slightly time poor. So there's so many opportunities. And when this opportunity, I was saying this to Carly actually a little while ago, like especially as for me in my growth as a person. I've been for like, what, I'm 35, I think. 36. Okay, sure. <laughs> for so long, you're like knocking on the door, especially when you're, you, you are new to the workforce. You're like, yeah, I can do that. Of course you can't do it. You're just telling everyone you can. And you're like, yes, I can do it. And, and you're trying to prove yourself. You're trying to prove yourself. And you get frustrated with that as a younger person. But now we're in this seat where actually we can, we've got so much opportunity. And the thing that probably would worry me the most is that, now's right the time that I've been waiting for the whole time. And it's actually a great thing. I'm really, really pumped about it, but it is on, on my mind because the whole time we've been banging on about, yeah, I can do it, I can do it. But now we're in this position, yeah, we, we actually can do it. And not only that, you now there's so many other open doors, that ability to actually get the quality time in and actually execute is a ridiculous problem to have, but now that's that's the problem. So especially for me, I think I'm personally at, I think we're at five gigs in Queensland this week. I'm at four myself. And then to, because that's, that's just out in the field, but then getting back behind the scenes and working on the growth and working on the, not only the admin, but actually the growth space is the, so that for me would be the key thing. I think the growth stuff is something that we're so passionate about and we have so many ideas. But again, when Aaron's out in the field for four gigs throughout the week, there's only limited time to work on the growth stuff when you take away all the must-do stuff at the end of the week. So yeah, we are time poor and we're also really passionate parents that I'm a stay-at-home mom. Our kids are with me 24-7. So we're with the boys and we're running a business at home and yeah we're we're trying to implement strategies both home and work so that we can try and excel in both areas to the best of our ability because at the moment we've got so much growth ahead of us and unfortunately we can't rely on three hours sleep a night (laughs) and balance I think is the key there because we could probably get all those jobs done if we just worked all the time, but that's also not an acceptable option because we've got these amazing little lads that are, are not going to be young forever. And we're not going to be those people that wake up one day and think, oh, that they just grew up. Like if the little man wants to go out and play golf, he's obsessed with golf at the moment. So we're out there with the putter and we're on the front grass. And he's like, Dad, you want to come play golf? I'm like, absolutely I do. And that's not easy for productivity, but so that's, you know, it's, it's counteractive, but it's a really positive one. Like it's certainly a drive as to why we want to dive deep in and work really hard. It's just a balance, like this just total shuffle between how's our family balance, how's our work balance. And yeah, I think that's something we're really conscious of and really positively focused on, but it's, it's pretty tough. When you think back to the Carly and Aaron who were embarking on this journey right back at the beginning, what do you wish you knew then that you know now? I think early days, I spent a lot of time thinking that I had to make really good networks. I think everyone in, would tell you, you've got to meet a lot of people. You've got to know a lot of people. You've got to go to networking. And I think I spent a lot of time doing that. And for people whom that works, that's amazing. But for me, I spent a lot of time doing the stuff that made no difference to our business. And 
for me to find out what those things were was only trial and error. And that was always going to be a a retrospective conversation with myself because you're never going to know those things. But for me to identify what didn't work, which was spending all this time on that and then actually finding out what does work. And for us, that is, I think, being bold at whatever we choose to do. And if you're going to do something for us, we've got to go bold. We've got to go, we've got to have everything in. We can't just buy a little bit of stuff. We can't invest a little bit there. We've got to go awesomely at it. And you've got to evaluate if that's that's for you. But that's probably the key thing that I would look back and think spent so much time on the wrong things. And now it's nice to know, have a, have a fair idea what the right things are and that'll, that'll continue to evolve. But yeah. And I think that in regards to styling, I think we took a lot of shortcuts at the start because you do have to invest a lot of money into equipment. And looking back, some of it is quite cringeworthy for me. And I just wish that we had the foresight to go, you know what, these key pieces, they need to be quality and you can really tell when it's not. And you want this experience to feel luxe and special and romantic. And if you're sitting on cheap equipment, that kind of shows. So that's something that I think I would look back on and and change if we had the time and again that's all relative like you're starting a new business and there's so many costs and you're taking so many risks but I think in in the industry that we're at it makes a real difference I'm sure there's plenty of people that would share this opinion with me if you look back on the first thing that you do the second the third and you don't cringe you're doing it wrong. <laughs> we all have to learn somewhere. I refuse now to listen back to my, my first few interviews because I actually just can't. I just can't. It just makes my, my skin crawl thinking about the gear that I was using, the way that my lack of confidence and it, we, we all have to start somewhere and grow somewhere. And yeah, you don't get to where you are now without the the, the cringe. <laughs> you hope nobody shares a photo <laughs> of just to, to give you some comfort there. You provide so much joy for people and it sounds like incredibly hard work, but incredibly rewarding work in the same respects. And with so much of yourselves going into your business, you don't get to grow without a little bit of help. So how can the listener and I support you on your journey? I think it would just be engage with us through social media, really like and follow our content. You know, the more people that get to know what we're doing, the more word of mouth of growing our business. Yeah. And, you know, it's so touching when you get a comment on something that we've created and someone goes, wow, that looks amazing. And it is even now after all these years, it's really exciting getting a comment like that of where someone has taken the time to go. That's beautiful. Couldn't agree more. And then I guess I'd throw that maybe the next step is throw it back on themselves. And like their whole business is about creating something beautiful for your partner. And one of our big focuses this year is that all these different things, but what are we doing for each other? And I think in small business, yeah, give us a like and 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 absolutely follow that. That'd be really great and amazing. But then I think turn it back on yourself. And am I, oh, when's the next date I'm going to take my partner out on? Or what's that out of the box thing? And I think that's the part of, of love that keeps perpetuating you don't get in in, in you know your cycles when, you, when you're busy and such so i'd probably throw it back on on people and then say yeah go and organize that and that, that next day with your partner keep the love keep the love alive and and um yeah i think investing in your relationship i think is a really good one even though that's not what you ask so <laughs> yeah i think that's a wonderful message and i'm going to go away and think about something special to do for my partner i'm sure he'll listen back to this and be like oh, where's my special thing because i probably would have gotten busy and forgotten about it again but i think that's wonderful advice you guys you've created a business out of your love and out of love and i just think that's the most wonderful thing i'm so grateful that you took some time out of having oh my god so many kids and so much to do <laughs> to spend some time with me tonight so i'm so grateful for you sharing your story with me. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kim. An amazing work with your podcast. Really love it. Thank you. And it was such a pleasure to be on and chat and reminisce. And yeah, I think when you're in the grind of a small business, you don't really reflect on how far you've come. And and that's what this podcast is all about. It's so amazing. So thanks for having us. Oh, thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. And uh, let's do another episode in the future when you're continuing to grow and bigger and better and learn all about the ups and the downs. It's been so great to chat with you guys. Thank you for listening to Unemployed and Afraid, the stories of starting over with your host, me, Kim Curtin. If you love it, you can say thanks with a star rating and a review. And of course, join the community on Instagram and LinkedIn. Find us at Unemployed and Afraid. See you there.